No, I just don't care about it. It's it's like it's almost like a loser's mentality. It's like right. everyone's so spoiled. Like right. it's it's <clears throat> like you know, uh, uh, he won't let me shine. I even heard someone say like, "Yo, why is Jay won't let Kanye?" I'm like, "Let Kanye. Kanye's Kanye. He's mm-hmm. gonna he's gonna he's gonna do what he does. That's a loser's mentality." My albums came out with Outkast, Lauren, Q Tip, mm-hmm. all of them in one week. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody did good. Mm-hmm. You know, look at look at the chart now. It's it's Wale, number one. This is like a shameless plug. Yeah. Rock Nation managed artist uh, J Cole, which mm-hmm. will probably go to number one next week again. Um, or no, for the first time ever, but he'll go to next number one. Rock Nation and it's Kanye. Everyone's flourishing. You know, you got to be out. You got to be able to compete. Still sharp and still. You got to get out there and you got to earn your spot. It's not given. It's such a a, a spoil you brat loses mentality that's it's 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 annoying there's a knowing in being an artist there's a knowing you can't guess you can't think there's a knowing you have to know that even if it doesn't work today tomorrow this artists that i play that weren't popular at the time that i play more than i play current artists shiggy otis i suggest you just go look up shiggy otis it was amazing and at the time it wasn't this hugely popular thing but i think we, we i think when it all said and done we would play that music more than any other music right so you have to have this knowing that okay it may not work today it may not work tomorrow but this is the right thing and this is what i'm doing and this is what's feeding me so I'll, that that would be the best advice that I can I can give you. That knowing, just just believe in what you're doing. And if you don't believe in it, then you're not doing it. You you, you haven't figured out the thing that you do best yet. When you feel it and when you know, no one can tell you. It, you only have to be right once. Mm. Um, I, I got up around eight. <laughs> I had some breakfast. When ran a mile, it was really tough. I a just mile. came from Aspen. Yeah, you know, I just wanted. To, touch it a little bit. I mean, everyone can't be like you, man. Oh, I mean. <laughs> it's gone, it's gone away. So, you know, uh, ran a mile. Then I went to um, the office, read a bunch of emails, read some more emails, <laughs> downloaded some music, legally. <laughs> Had a, a meeting with um, some great people, I don't want to really say their name yet. After that, uh, listened to some music, went to the studio, had dinner, oh, went to the Nets game, we won, we're, we're up 3-2, thank you very much, um, went to sleep. Good day. Good day, full day. Great day. Yeah, we was going to Club Exit. <laughs> And uh, we get into the, the we get in the front of the club. We pull up and, and Big see some guys out there, and he says, "Man, I'm not I'm not going in there." And I'm like, "What?" He's like, "No, nah, uh, these guys over there. I don't I'm not even you know uh, you know I don't feel like it tonight." So me and Tata, you know, we just came in the music business. We don't really understand what he's saying. We think he's scared. So we like, "What? Let us out this car right now!" <laughs> so me and Tata leave the car, and we talk about Big behind his back. And we was like, man, you, could you believe that, man? He's scared that he's got, we, but we wanted to prove to the guys in front of the club that we wasn't scared. So we go in the club, big pulls off, and, and for a while, I thought that he was really scared of these guys until later on, I realized that he had a bigger goal and he knew where he was going and he didn't want to deal with it. He wasn't scared. It was just like, why do, why put himself in that position if he didn't have to? And I thought that was genius. And I guess that helps me a lot as well. And I thought that question was great. Thank you. It's always good to compare yourself to people you look up to, right? Because you, you give yourself a high goal. You set high standards for yourself. And, um, you know, pretty much the way he lived his life and the parallels and how he affected culture is what I strive to do. He had a record label and he owned Reprise Records and he released Jimi Hendrix. Kanye West is my Jimi Hendrix, you know. My record label is Rockefeller. <laughs> You know, just compare yourself to the greats. You, you, Set the bar really high. <laughs> because all he can do is the best he can do. He's mm-hmm. not a superhero. Mm-hmm. And it's unfair to place unfulfillable expectations on this man just mm-hmm. because of his color. Mm-hmm. You, you're actually doing the opposite. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like, what do you think is going to happen? He's, he's there for eight years. Mm-hmm. And he has to undo what 43 presidents have done mm-hmm. in eight years. Mm-hmm. It's not fair. What do you think of the state of 
I'm not going to say just black leadership, leadership period, on the things you care about in the country. Who do you like look at and say, this man or woman I speaks think, uh, for the things I care about? <laughs> it's going to be funny. But <laughs> I find it funny, but my, my leadership, I like Dave Chappelle's <laughs> Because he tells it in humor so you can deal with it, but it's always a bit, a, a nice chunk of truth in it. I can only assume, because I don't know the answer to that, except that, you know, sometimes people's success, you know, make people feel, instead of saying, wow, that person's successful and uh, I'm, I'm inspired, well, some people are. Some people are like, that person's successful, I'm gonna I'm strive and I'm gonna be exactly where they are. And some people are just like, they got the reverse attitude, like, their success means my failure. So I hate that success, so I have, to, I have to make some kind of explanation of why they're here and why they shouldn't be here and then why they wouldn't be here if this person was here. Who thinks like that? If you take that Black long people. to think... Black if you, culture, if you take that long to think about someone, why they sh shouldn't be here, then you're good. Mm -hmm. And you should be doing something with that intelligence. <laughs> Lock my body, can't trap my mind. Easily explain why we adapt to crime. I'd rather die enormous than live dormant. That's how we own it. But that line, I'd rather die enormous than live dormant. That's how we own it. Living the American dream with a vengeance. I'm going to get it. I don't give a f I'm going to get it. I'm and you got to understand the reason, right? Why does that guy think like that? Right? How do, how do you arrive at that point? You got to also look at that. You have to look at that. You got to look at the environments and places we live in and how things are set up and how things are structured and how we're always the last on the totem pole, even from our schooling to our roads to, you know, everything that, we, that all the obstacles that's placed in front of us, even our living conditions. You live in a project. Someone lives here, 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 and here. You know, you have to deal with all these different type of personalities. You have, you're in the box. Someone's above you, below you, to the right of you, and to the left of you. And every day you have to manage that circle. And that's just one, that's just two floors. These buildings have 26 <laughs> floors, right? These low income houses. And everything is messed up there. So, live, that's like living dormant. If this, if this is like, this is what I have to live for, then I'm gonna take a chance to get more. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what happens to me. I think that rap in particular is a young man's sport, that I'll move out of that white hot space. But rap is about the gift of discovery. Hmm. To be the cool person in school, you have to know the newest music, the newest dance move, have the newest clothing on. Mm -hmm. So rap is based on that, what's mm -hmm. new. What do you, oh, yeah, I know you know Jay-Z is good, but mm -hmm. do you know this song right here that only four people heard it? Right. At the end of the day, we're going to find out it's not about the white hot space, but it's about finding the truth. Mm -hmm. That white hot space, people think it's the biggest <coughs> thing, but it's really small. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a trend. Mm -hmm. Would you rather be a trend or you rather be Ralph Lauren? <laughs> right. But I'm the person that looked at the Mona Lisa and be like, man, that's going to be cool in, a in 40 years. Right. <laughs> right. I play forever. Right. I play forever. And, right. be and so my whole thing is to identify with the truth, not to be the youngest, hottest, new, trendy thing. I, I, I think in business, one, one of the biggest things is to open yourself up for change. You don't have to change who you are and how you operate, but just, you know, you know, if the landscape has changed, then the way we do business has to change somewhat. We don't have to change who we are. We have to change the way we go about it. Because like I said, the consumption of music is higher than ever. The reason I focused on that because such a small thing changed my life, right? A, a sixth grade teacher said, you know what, you're kind of smart. And I, and, I, and I believed her. I said, I'm smart, right? So she gave me that sort of opportunity. She sparked the idea in my mind. So that's why my first thing is uh, the scholarship fund, because there are a ton of uh, very intelligent kids that's coming out of these urban areas who can make it all the way if given the opportunity. And um, so it's a challenge that I uh, gave to my mom, and my mom is so involved with it. Like she, she gets on the bus and she takes these kids to their um, um, to interview with colleges. And you know, now we're starting to see kids graduate from college, and you know, that sort of feeling. You know, when it's real, I'm not just sitting home writing a check, and you know, for whatever reason, to make myself feel good or anything like that. It's something that I really want to do, and I'm really, um, you know, into and excited about. So 
Yeah. I'm seeing the results. I'm seeing, you know, we were getting our first graduates from the Sean Carter Scholarship Program, which is like, for me, the best thing ever.